Today we're going to talk about this tank I built and how I set it up using the Father Fish recommendations. He's a YouTuber that's been in the fish hobby for many, many decades, and he set up dirted tanks for his fish. He didn't have to change many of those tanks in any way besides maybe 10% water changes like once per year, I think it was, in 20 years in some cases. And so we'll talk about that a little bit today. The plants are cuttings an inch into the sand layer and they should root within a few days to a week. I've actually pulled some up in a different tank I put together and roots are forming and that tank is newer than this one. The light should be left on for two to four weeks according to Father Fish. And so I'm just following his instructions and in setting a tank up here in this video today. And we'll cover some of the details about how to do that so that you can do it too. So I'm setting up what's called a dirted tank. And I'm learning a lot from this guy here named Father Fish. He has a YouTube channel. And I purchased a product for him. It's got 11 ingredients in it, I believe. And that, mixed in with some other ingredients, will form the dirt layer, an inch deep substrate that will then go under a two inch sand layer. Following the directions here for a 20 gallon tank, but I've got it for a five gallon tank here. Get, got this all mixed up so that I can put it down. And it says that the next step is to turn it into a mud-like consistency. And so I'm going to finish that step and I'll be back with you in a moment. Filming the video back here and just down here while I was walking. <laughs> Before we look at the lizard, let's take a peek at the quail walking past over here. Down here, an alligator lizard. This one has lost a portion of its tail. And so it's not quite as long as they sometimes are. Gorgeous animals. <laughs> it's always very nice to have a set of instructions to follow the first time you are setting something up. And that's the point of this video. But it's also very important to cite your resources. And I really appreciate Father Fish and the work that he's done, the research that he's done, the collaborations that he's done, all of the information he's gathered in 60 plus years, I think, of keeping fish and planted or what we call dirted tanks. Some of his tanks haven't been changed in over 20 years, and I find that very impressive. And just the naturalistic template I've been looking for in setting up pet bug tanks. The next step is to add water and I've put a cutting board down in here so that the water doesn't create a huge divot and stir up the sand and soil too much and per the father fish recommendations. And so I'm slowly just going to trickle the water in here until the tank is full to the level that I want it to be. I'm watching the water saturate the sand and I'm very happy already with the clarity of the water. That's the main reason I guess to have a cutting board or a plate down in the bottom when you're adding the water so that you don't stir up the sand too much into the water column.
Work harder, not smarter. The next step will be to add plants. And I did purchase a bundle of 15 plants from the Father Fish website as well. And while this is filling up, I'll run down and grab those. This isn't level ground here that this picnic table is resting on. And so my dad, who was born in October, would say it's messing with his Libra. Just want to see that water level even. Gotta keep respect to your parents. I'm a Capricorn after all, and so it's a very practical thing to do. All right, this part is going to be a very new experience for me in placing plants an inch down into the sand. You can see that I added some what's called hardscape into the tank in the form of a few rocks here. I was actually maybe going to add this as well, but I decided against it. I'm going to start with my first plant. I've only watched a portion of one video where Father Fish poked some of these by way of a long pair of metal tongs. And this one is a little taller, so I'm going to poke it into the back. And only an inch down, so just about there. And uh, that looks okay so far. I see a little rock or something has gotten up here on the surface. Get rid of that. I'm gonna find a similar plant and put it in just near that one. Let me get the right angle on that. Kind of like the way that looks already. And I'm putting it in about an inch away from the other one and again an inch into the sand in terms of depth. Two inches of sand and one inch of soil beneath it and I will work here to add in a few more plants. I'm not going to go crazy with plants this time. I got enough plants I think for maybe a 20 gallon tank but this is just a five gallon tank and I want to make sure that there's plenty of room to see the beetles. Now I'm happy with this. I also think I'm gonna put some aquatic insects in there here pretty quick. And really, there's no reason to wait. Doesn't that look nice? Very happy with it. Fun to watch this whirly gig exploring the surface here in the new tank. The genus for this one is Dineutus and I'm doing a pretty good job of keeping the camera in front of it up until the end there. I have a few other organisms down here in this eight ounce cup. Seed shrimp, also called ostracods, zipping around there. Very small diving beetle. And then a larger diving beetle now above it. This morning in the tank, on one of the leaves that I dropped down onto the bottom, this water boatman is feeding as they do on the decaying vegetation. Back swimmers just kind of hang out in the water column. Pretty stationary, moving around a little bit and grabbing small particles of food that float by. Two very similar looking things. Oh, that one just took off. Where are you going? Good shot there. 
put the water boatman down on another leaf now. The patterning on their backs is really neat. And in the sunlight, sometimes it reflects sort of a oil and water quality. Damselfly larva. And a little Tropisternus water scavenger beetle back there. Scavenging maybe the beginnings of algae forming on the rock. Sunburst diving beetle. Just hanging out. A few other diving beetles or maybe scavenger beetles hiding in the plant there. And then over here on this side, we've got a water scorpion. See its eyes, bulbous and poking out. Its raptorial forelegs like a mantis, ready for passing prey to grab them when they swim by. These things often end up being feeders, these back swimmers, for the water scorpions. There's actually a second one over on that side there, a slightly smaller one. I think it's a breeding pair. Should probably remove them from this tank because we want a few more beetles swimming around and maybe a couple more back swimmers and don't want to lose them to the water scorpions, which are predatory. There's a good shot of the water scorpion. The red ram's horn snail, keeping it clean in the tank. Got a Thermonectus siblii hiding back there, cousin to the sunburst diving beetle. There's also a banded diving beetle in here somewhere. And every week or two, I'll add in some more leaves. And eventually the bottom will be filled up with leaves and that will provide breeding habitat and shelter for some of the other microorganisms that all work together to maintain an equilibrium in the tank, break down waste of the larger organisms in the tank, like the larger water beetles.